So uh, when neurologists use the term Parkinsonism, they're talking about um, a syndrome complex, so a, a certain set of symptoms and signs that uh, reflect dysfunction of a certain part of the uh, the brain, what we would call the extrapyramidal system of, of the brain. But these are parts of the brain that are important in particular for smooth and fluid movement. So uh, when I talk about Parkinsonism, uh, I'm talking mainly about three different symptoms and signs. So that is uh, what I would call bradykinesia, rigidity and tremor. So that means bradykinesia is slowness of movement, so a certain type of slowness of movement. Rigidity refers to a certain type of stiffness that I can feel on examination that is uh, different to the stiffness you can see in some other conditions like MS, for example, that we call spasticity. Uh, and tremor uh, is tremor, so everyone knows what tremor is, but it's a certain type of uh, oscillatory movement um, uh, of the limbs. And again, there's lots of different types of tremor, but there's a certain type of tremor uh, that is very characteristic for uh, dysfunction of the extrapyramidal system, so what, what we call Parkinsonism. So that collection of those three um, uh, you would broadly term Parkinsonism, and that uh, uh, differs from Parkinson's disease only in the sense that uh, Parkinsonism can have lots of different causes, um, of which the commonest cause is Parkinson's disease, so that's sometimes called idiopathic Parkinson's disease or classical Parkinson's disease, that all means the same thing. Um, but the reason we use the term Parkinsonism is to... Uh, uh, emphasize that there are other causes of that and there are many but uh, the commonest are uh, uh, what's called vascular parkinsonism which is caused by wear and tear and blockage of blood vessels the same process that can cause strokes um, but uh, if the areas of the brain are affected uh, in the extrapyramidal system that will call, cause a certain type of parkinsonism uh, and there's uh, what are sometimes called the parkinson's plus syndromes um, which feature Parkinsonism, but other uh, other features as well, both in symptoms and what you find on examination that are rarer, look a bit like Parkinson's disease, but are pathologically different and respond differently to, to treatment and follow a different a different time course. Uh, the commonest of those are what's called PSP, progressive supranuclear palsy, it's a condition called multiple system atrophy, MSA, corticobasal degeneration, and so on. There's a collection of these conditions which are much less common than Parkinson's disease itself. Um, but, we, but we use that term uh, so that we're uh, perhaps not being too specific in diagnosis uh, to start with before we've got some more information. So the commonest cause of uh, somebody who has Parkinsonism is uh, uh, Parkinson's disease itself. So uh, uh, that's sometimes termed classical or idiopathic Parkinson's disease. Idiopathic meaning uh, we can't attribute it to a specific cause and of course there is a cause but uh, what we mean is it's not you know it's not caused by a stroke or a brain injury or um, certain medications that can cause Parkinsonism and so on and it seems to be just the uh, the the disease that was first described um, uh, by James Parkinson's, uh, Parkinson's um, uh, a long time ago and it appears to be a a classical degenerative condition. So it seems to affect uh, older patients uh, uh, more often. The It seems to just be a, uh, a gradually degenerative wear and tear effect in those bits of the brain that are important for smooth and fluid movement, whereas other parts of the brain seem to be relatively spared. And this is similar in, uh, in a way to a lot of conditions that we might expect with the aging process. Um, so Different bits of our body all wear out at different times. So some people get arthritis in, in their joints. Some people get heart disease. Some patients will get dementia, which affects the cortex, the thinking bits of the brain. Uh, but in, in some patients, we get this um, wear and tear degeneration of the extrapyramidal system, which causes Parkinson's. And so it could be thought of as a premature aging of that, that, that particular bit of, of the brain. And we don't fully understand the reasons for that. And genetics, for example, actually plays a very minor role in most most cases so uh, it is not usually a familial or genetic condition there are some genetic forms of parkinson's uh, and we understand some of the genes that are involved in those but um, actually that's actually relatively uncommon so the symptoms um that uh, a patient will notice is often uh, a slowness slowness of movement uh, slowness and quietness of speech of the voice um, the slowness of movement will 
actually often come on so gradually and slowly that uh, patients might not notice it or might attribute it to other problems, so arthritis or just getting older. Um, but it becomes more apparent that it's uh, you know it's more than you would expect and it's a, a, a different type of slowness. So they'll notice it in walking, for example, uh, taking slower and very much smaller steps. So we sometimes talk about a shuffling quality to, to patients' gait when they're walking. Uh, they'll not be swinging their arm uh, properly that we normally do as we walk. Um, and there can be changes to posture, so a more stooped uh, posture that um, uh, the patient might not notice, but uh, family members uh, uh, might notice. So there's this slowness. Uh, the stiffness uh, is actually often not noticed by the patient, but it's something that we would pick up more uh, on examination. But tremor is certainly something that's often noticed by the patient or by family members, and that's often the first symptom that the uh, people notice so they pick up this tremor it's often what we call a rest tremor so it's there when uh, the arm and the hand is not really doing anything it's just sitting there quietly for example while watching television uh, it will just start to develop a, quite a characteristic uh, what we call a pill rolling tremor uh, because it looks like you're, you're, you're rolling uh, rolling something between your fingers um, uh, that uh, we call it pill rolling because um, this used to be a job that people did uh, a long time ago, rolling medicines, rolling pills, and they used to do this sort of action, and it looks a bit like that uh, when you see see this tremor. Uh, so it's a rest tremor. It's not there so much when patients are doing things with their hands. It often disappears or, or reduces. Uh, so those are the uh, most common symptoms that, that the patients will notice. And then uh, on examination, so the clinical signs, again, the tremor, as we've discussed, the rigidity, the stiffness is something we feel when we move the limbs, uh, uh, when they're nice and relaxed, you can feel a certain type of rigidity uh, that has a, sort of a jerky quality to it. Um, uh, uh, and we can look and see the uh, the slowness of what we call bradykinesia, so slowness of movement. And, and that clinical picture uh, is how, how we would diagnose someone with Parkinsonism. So um, if it is, it depends on the cause, but if it's Parkinson's disease, uh, I would say it's the commonest cause of uh, uh, Parkinsonism, uh, it is a progressive condition. So uh, it does uh, slowly uh, and gradually worsen over time, but we're talking about timescales of many years. So, um, you know, and although that varies from patient to patient, uh, you know, you're looking at changes over periods of, five, 10, 15, 20 years sometimes. So very, very slow, gradual uh, worsening. Um, and that uh, that's affected to some extent by the, the treatments, um, uh, although the, uh, the treatments really are aimed at improving the symptoms and they're, they're quite good at doing that uh, in, in many patients, uh, although they don't actually stop the progression going on in the background. So the condition is still progressing in the background, although you may not notice that because the, the, the treatment is, is helping. So the the main uh, the main dysfunction uh, and problem in Parkinson's disease is uh, reduced activity in the dopaminergic system. So dopamine is one of the neurotransmitters in the brain, uh, which does various things, and that's particularly the one that uh, you're running low on uh, in in Parkinson's. And the mainstay of treatment um, for many years has been replacing or uh, uh, dopamine or stimulating dopamine receptors to try and get them functioning uh, more normally. Uh, the uh, uh, the mainstay of, uh, of that treatment uh, now for many years actually has been giving levodopa. So levodopa is a medication that in the brain um, has converted to, to, to do dopamine and that's taken in tablet form. Uh, 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 well, most usually in, in, in tablet form uh, and that directly replaces uh, what, what patients are running short of. And in most patients, and not everyone responds to levodopa, but most patients do, uh, that will significantly improve symptoms. And uh, to the extent that many patients will not notice actually that there's some progression going on in the background because it's very good at uh, improving those symptoms. Uh, there, there are other treatments available. Uh, so some of these are dopamine agonists. So these are tablets that rather than replacing levodopa, stimulate your existing dopamine receptors. Uh, and they can be helpful, uh, though uh, probably have more side effects than, than the levodopa. So we've actually been using those less in, 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 in recent years. 
um, and shifted back to using Lever Deeper, which in some ways is quite an old fashioned treatment. It's been around a long time, but it's still the most uh, most effective. Uh, um, uh, other treatments uh, are used probably more in patients who've been on levodopa for quite a long time, sometimes years when it's becoming less effective. Uh, we manage that partly by changing how often uh, we give the, the, the medication or in different formulations that are uh, slower release, for example, so you get a smoother delivery of medication uh, to try and avoid these fluctuations that you often get in Parkinson's when you've had it a number of years. Patients will tend to go up, down, up, down, up, down uh, throughout the day. So treatments uh, uh, later on in the course of the disease are aimed at trying to smooth out those fluctuations. Uh, well, you can also do that by uh, giving medications uh, via injection rather rather than oral in tablets. So you can have a treatment that uh, you take uh, with a little needle under the skin that's gradually infused throughout the day called apomorphine. Uh, that's, which is nothing to do with morphine, the drug morphine, by the way, it's just called apomorphine. Um, the uh, there's a treatment called uh, duodopa, which is given uh, via a tube that goes directly into the gut, so it's absorbed uh, uh, much better. And uh, you then have the more uh, more invasive treatments, so what's called deep brain stimulation. So uh, this is where uh, we insert uh, wires and electrodes deep uh, into the uh, into the brain. Uh, it's a little bit like having a pacemaker, um, but into the into the areas of the brain. That's connected to a, a stimulator and a battery pack that uh, tries to uh, stimulate the circuits that are that are malfunctioning to get them to work uh, work more normally. Um, so uh, that that's a treatment that's usually used in patients who've been on medication for a number of years and the medication uh, uh, is becoming uh, more difficult to to manage and and, and, and less effective. Most of those treatments have actually been available for a number of years, and I think. And, probably a notable and perhaps a negative feature of, of treatment in Parkinson's that it has not actually changed dramatically uh, in, in the last uh, 10 years or even more and that there's still a need for uh, for what we call a disease modifying treatment so a treatment that uh, doesn't just improve the symptoms but actually uh, slows down the progression or repairs the the the, uh, the damage that, that that's happening in Parkinson's so that's still an area that uh, that is uh, an unmet need and, and, a, and a research challenge. 